Welcome to the second part of the video on how to prepare a bed leveling sensor do it yourself. In this part of the video we will see how to set up the firmware and everything that needs to be done in the slicer to get your bed leveling sensor to work in the printer and finally how to set up for the first print. There we go! The starting point is of course uh, marlinfw.org, the official website for Marlin. So you go to your own page and you click on the big download button. This will bring you to the download page and then you go to the latest release. I don't suggest either going to the previous release or to the uh, patches or whatever. Just take the latest stable release and then you just click download and this will download the zip file. After you've downloaded the uh, Marlin files, you go over, you navigate to the Marlin folder and you will get uh, this folder structure here. And if you go inside Marlin, you will have example configurations. You go into example configuration, you take the ones from Creality, you take Ender 3 and then you will get these files. You just select all the files, copy them, and then you put them inside the main Marlin folder and you replace whatever is sitting in there. After doing that, you have basically overwritten the configuration to get the ones that are that have been built by the community for uh, the Creality and the 3 machine. And uh, you can do this by using the example configurations or you can also uh, take my own configuration. You will find the link in the description below. And that will include everything that is uh, needed to do the bad leveling and also a few other features that I find useful. Now you open your new Marlin um, firmware into Arduino IDE and you get to this screen. This is all the sub uh, uh, programs or uh, sub pages of, uh, that the firmware is composed of. So you add over to configuration.h and this is the main page for the configuration of printer. So we scroll it down and then um, we will find all the needed uh, changes to do in here. This one, configuration.h, is the one that I'm going to provide to everybody and as I said the link is in the description below. Um, I have tried to make it easy to navigate the file uh, by tagging the modifications I have made. So in Arduino everything that is uh, anticipated by a double slash, it's a comment. That means it's just for humans to read and when the program is compiled into the software, this just gets ignored by the compiler. So this is useful for us to get an understanding of everything that is happening. So as I said, I'm going to tag all changes with my name. So it's double slash a dash make dash designs. And that's all the changes that I've made to the software, to the firmware are tagged like this. The first one, we start with a strict config h author and uh, the configurator author for this one is this is Keith B. I decided that I'm going to uh, give him credit because I just uh, branched it out with uh, some changes but the basic uh, configuration is done by him and uh, this guy has amazingly reverse engineered uh, the Creality firmware um, so I think he deserves uh, credit absolutely for that. Apart from this uh, tag that I made with the AMake designs I have also added another tag that is called MUST for BL. That stands for MUST for bed leveling. So that is everything that is needed to be changed to get the bed leveling to work. The reason why I did this is that I want to uh, specify everything that is connected to the bed leveling function and everything else is just uh, something that I have decided to change uh, for, for various reasons, mainly because I prefer it to be like that. So uh, feel free to browse through it. If you search for A make designs, you will find everything that's been changed in the firmware by me. And of course, this comes with a big uh, disclaimer. Use this at your own risk. You could have a different configuration in the machine. You can have different hardware. So uh, do, do your research. Uh, take the time to go through the firmware and check that everything is correct uh, before flashing it in your printer. Okay, now, now we dig into it. So if you can just search for master bad leveling, as I said, you're going to go straight into the ones that are uh, needed for this modification. First things first is that uh, the standard stock board for uh, the Ender 3 is uh, done with a very limited uh, chip that has a very limited amount of memory. For this reason we're going to remove from the firmware some of the functions that I think are not needed. 
and the first one is the boot screen. So I removed the boot screen and I also removed the custom boot screen and the custom status screen image. I don't think they're needed, uh, they just flash for a very short time, so um, I can very happily live without. Next ones, we go a bit more into the um, functional ones. There are two of, there's two of them. So one, uh, this one is used to invert the behavior of the end stops for the Z axis. I have to do this because my probe is normally open. So I have to reverse the behavior of the end stop because otherwise uh, it will trigger when the sensor is not triggered, which is uh, not the behavior of my sensor. Check with yours. If it's normally open, you have to uh, reverse this from uh, false to true. Otherwise you can leave it to false. Next, it's the probe offset. The probe offset that I set is the one that is uh, that you can get from this link here, which is the Thingiverse thing that is uh, that I have designed. So it's a very basic support uh, for a M18 uh, proximity sensor, so pretty basic. And the distance is 4800. Um, that is very similar, if not exactly the same as the Patfang but uh, just check for your mount and measure your mount and you'll find, uh, you find that very easily. So we get away with these three. Next one, multiple probing. I think probing only once is a bit uh, too little for me. So uh, if you set multi-probing to two, that means that it's, it's going to do first a fast probe, then it goes back a bit and then it goes forward again slowly towards the bed and this gives better results. Next one, out of bed leveling. Of course, you're going to uh, uncomment that. And uh, we're going to use the bilinear function. Uh, you have others as well, but uh, again, this is a good compromise with the limitations that we have in, in, in our board. Restore leveling after G28. So uh, as you can see here, normally G28 leaves leveling disabled on completion. We want to enable this to have G28 restored to prior leveling state. So we can comment that one. And then we have the probe position. This is again because of my set. So you will see that you have left, right, front and back. And that's the, the four sides of the bed. So from left, we use the 48, which is the distance of the, of the probe. Uh, by doing that, basically, we're going to home on the, on the left hand side and then the basically the, the, the motor will not move and we will stay uh, in contact with the end stop. Right, we go to the other side and we go a bit backwards to avoid uh, just sitting on the edge. Front and back, same thing. We just want to avoid uh, sitting on the edge with those ones. Next one, extrapolate beyond grid. What we do is uh, basically we want the uh, firmware to infer the position or the, the, the tilt of the bed after the reading. So uh, basically, otherwise the, the default is, as you can read here, is to maintain the height of the nearest edge. So basically you get to a tilt and then it's straightened out because uh, the machine doesn't know what comes after. So what we're doing with that is that we're, we're telling the machine to assume that outside of the measuring grid, the bed will still continue in with the same uh, tilt. Next one, we have Z safe homing. Uh, the description is above, so you want to do Z homing only after X and Y have been homed first. And you cannot basically ohm Z if X and Y have not been homed first. And in, also in that case, by default, it will home in the middle of the bed. Uh, that is to avoid the, the, the probe to hit anything uh, in its path. So basically it's just going to home X and, uh, X and Y and then it goes straight into the middle and then homes Z. Next one, this is again to uh, reduce memory usage. We go to slim LCD menus. We're basically trimming off everything that is not used in the LCD menus. So all menus that are not going to be relevant for our uh, configuration are going just to be removed. The last one, uh, one of my favorites, it's we comment out defined speaker. So we're basically killing the speaker. This is used to remove memory, to reduce memory usage, plus the speaker, it's annoying. And we are done with configuration.h. The problem here is that we're not quite done with the size of the firmware software. So we need to scrape out a few more bits here and there. 
So what we go to do next, a lot of people is doing this in the community. As you see here, I have flagged sketch, search all sketch tabs. So if I hit find one more time, it will go into the configuration underscore ADV, that has for advanced. And this is going straight into this arc support. I have commented it out. You can see that this comment here is straight from the firmware. So it says disable this feature to save uh, 3000 something bytes. So it's so, let's say, frequent that this gets disabled to save some, uh, some memory that they also put it in the comments uh, in, the, in the file itself. I have commented it out. Um, I don't think that this is uh, very much supported in the current slicers. I don't even think that this is very much needed. So this is something I can uh, live without. So I took that off to save uh, some memory as well. And this is it. So uh, when you've done this, you just hit save and then you go up here, you compile your firmware and then you upload it to your machine. And after that, you are pretty much done. The next thing we have to do, and it's the last one on the computer before we can head over to the printer, is we have to uh, put a few extra lines of code in front of uh, all our uh, Cura sliced files or whatever slicer you're using. What you see now on the screen is Cura 3.4.1. So you head over to settings, printer, and then you go into manage printers. And then you go into the machine settings and you will see our machine settings sitting here. And I have this start G code. You will also find this start G code in the, the description below. So don't uh, worry about uh, typing everything you see on the screen now. I start by uh, setting the uh, material print temperature and bed temperature uh, to the needed uh, ones. As you can see, I don't wait for the hot hand to heat up. I wait for the bed temperature. Then we go into home and then we have this bit now, which is a new bit that you need to have, which is G29 mesh generation. I don't rely on uh, the previous mesh reading uh, because I could have moved uh, slightly the bed. I, I, I have a um, flexible bed that I uh, take in and out from the printer. So I want to do a fresh uh, measurement every time. This is why every time I start up a new print, I have this mesh generation in the G code. Then you wait again for the stabilization of the temperature before starting to print, because otherwise it would just uh, uh, jump into print. And then I zero the extruder, I move to the front of the bed, I draw a line, I, I do a purge line, I zero the extruder again. And then this last bit here as well, it's connected to bed leveling, is M420. So M420 is a uh, bad leveling fading, basically. Uh, what you can set here is a Z measurement after which bad leveling fades away. The reason why you want to have this is because otherwise you will have Z axis correction, which is very fine and it goes along the complete print. This is totally optional. You can take it or leave it and uh, up to you. I just wanted to tell of this uh, a bit of a less known uh, feature. Uh, I like it and I'm using it, but uh, feel free to experiment and decide if you want to take it in or out. It doesn't require any further change in the firmware. And this is it from uh, the computer. So uh, we move to the physical world and uh, let's uh, have a look at what you need to do uh, to set up the printer for the first print. We have to set our probe so that the distance between the activation point and the nozzle is like two or three millimeters to make sure that we have enough room and we're not colliding the nozzle on the bed. To do this, we will have to, uh, to head to a new menu that is under the control menu inside motion and inside probe Z offset. Probe Z offset is default zero, but we actually have to put it like to minus three or something like that, which is bigger than uh, the actual value because Due to the fact that the printer uh, is set with a safety feature, it will not allow uh, you to manually uh, input any Z coordinate below zero. Because of that, we need to uh, actually basically fake that we are higher than we should actually be. Next, we go into the prepare menu and we do a auto ohm. Since we have enabled the auto ohm safety function, it will first ohm X and Y, and then it will ohm Z in the middle of the bed. Now you see it goes in the middle of the bed, lowers that and lowers it down, activates the probe twice, and we are ready. And now 
apparently we are at Z plus 3 and in fact we're quite far away from the bed. Now we have to figure out how much far away we are so we go into the prepare menu, move axis, move Z and then we go into move 0.1 millimeters because we want a quite uh, small resolution. So we start going down and we will find with our sheet of paper when the nozzle begins to drag on the paper and for me it's 0.4 that means that my reel of the offset is actually 3 minus 0.4 which is 2.6 so I'm going to stop it here then I'm going back to my control menu and I'm going to set the Z offset to 2.6 as we have seen I set it to 2.6 and then I go one step back and then I click store settings. Store settings stores this setting to the EEPROM. Then just to make to make sure that we are safe, we do it once again. So we just ohm Z this time. So we can move Z up and then we will probe it again. You'll see now that the actual coordinates of Z is going to be 2.6 so now we are at plus 2.6 so we lower it down again to zero and we see if we've done it properly and that's the confirmation that we've done it properly so we have stored our settings and now we're basically good to go and this brings us to the end of the journey on how to make a bed leveling sensor uh, with Marlin how to set it up and how to put it to work properly it's been a very nice journey for me uh, with a lot of learnings and I hope you did the same. If you like what you see, please subscribe or leave a comment and uh, until next time.